confirm these two cameras over here, Canon CIN 300. I'm now controlling that with the joystick and then I can change over to the Panasonic camera and zoom out and zoom in and so on. So that's also being controlled back to the Canon camera. And the cool thing is that I know the Canon camera is on preview, so I might want to just be aware of that. With the uh, integration from Reactor, it means that a PTC controller and a live switching controller will talk together like that so that the operators are fully aware whether cameras are on, on preview or on active uh, on a system like VMAX. <laughs> Today we'll explore one of the cornerstone features of a Skahoi controller. The ability to seamlessly integrate control of vastly different devices such as PDC cameras and a video switcher. The Rack Fusion Live controller is simply designed with both in mind and that's the perfect fusion. It's the one man band in a single box basically. And furthermore with our blue pill platform you really can get away with mixing any brands and models of PTC cameras and keep full and detailed control of them easily. And the Rack Fusion Live connects directly to these cameras and it also connects directly to vMix which we'll explore today. You do not need to have any computer in between the panel and the devices you control. Also, there is so much power packed in the controller that you don't need to worry about the amount of cameras that you can control. You simply won't be limited at all. So finally, as the Rack Fusion Live with Blue Pill inside is a part of Skahoi's new platform, you can easily include other Skahoi controllers as well. And with Blue Pill inside, you get the ease of use, you get a lot of power to control all your devices, and the system can expand. So let's go. This is the Rack Fusion Live. It is a um, controller that is basically two Skahoi controllers baked together into a single two rack unit device. We have a live fly on the left side and we have a PC fly on the right side. And we also have this wonderful Hall Effect joystick on the controller today, which gives you added precision, additional precision and some convenience. So that's a nice little upgrade. But other than that, it's just a unified experience and even in software, which you'll see. So let's just quickly look at the switcher side. We have vMix over here and on the vMix system, you can see that selecting um, sources on these buttons will select on preview. If you hold down shift, you can uh, access additional um, sources. So that would be up to 18 vMix sources that we can select like that. We can press the cut button to cut between sources. We can press the auto button to have a transition. Currently we have the fly type transition which we can change in this one. So let's go to a wipe and then also let's change the transition time which we can do on this encoder so that we have a different transition time. So far pretty easy, isn't it? We also have the ability to make a transition with the fader on the panel. And then finally, we have fade to black as well here. If you wonder about different mixes, you know, you have different mix buses in vMix, so you can change that on this one. Notice that I'm clicking the sides of the button. That's because this is a four way button and therefore we can go forth and back between the mixes. And each mix has a different set of active and preview source that are reflected on the bus delegation row down here. So I think if I press the low edge, then I go straight to my mix one all the time. This is basically a menu button and it allows me to choose between different menu options. Often when I select the menu option, I'm basically um, going, uh, getting away from my, from my menu, which we can get back to on using the user key U2. So um, that's very useful to have this to, to get into your, um, your, your menu and we can quickly uh, choose the, function that we want. So if we are in the home menu and we press home, then we get to overlays. You can see here that uh, we can uh, enable and disable basically toggling our overlays. So if we look uh, in vMix, you can see that the overlays are also um, enabled and disabled right here on, uh, on this, uh, this function. So that's in place. And we can also change uh, overlay uh, sources, but that's happening in the output menu. So it's just in the home menu, we have the direct access to toggling our overlays. We can also toggle recording and streaming on and off. And um, that's basically what we have in home. Now in the bus menu, we have a lot of advanced functionality. First of all, we can assign sources to our overlays. So you can pick overlay one, two, and three, and then the encoders over here will select the source for the overlay. 
Um, and um, so right now I'm basically changing the source in um, with the encoder over here. But if I hold down the key, I can also, uh, the lower edge, you see that my otherwise, the, the row of buttons that will select preview and program or preview and active sources now becomes a delegation row for my sources of the overlay. So I'm just uh, picking them right here um, from the lower row of buttons. And if I hold down the shift key as well, then using my thumb, I can also pick additional sources in there. I can go to overlay two and do the same. So, and this is all, all the time shown in the display. You see OVL2 uh, is set in the title. So I know exactly what it is I'm delegating here. So that's the overlay delegation that you can do on this button. On the next one, if I press the low edge, we are basically temporarily hijacking this row of buttons to actually select sources for my output. And if I press on the side, I can go to output three, output four, full screen one, full screen two. If I press the low edge, I'm now going to delegate. So there you see. I can also pick multi-view program preview and replay up here. So that's some of the bus functions that you find inside. Um, um, you also have, um, buttons to toggle, multi-corder, record, stream, external, etc. If we move to audio, basically we have um, five buttons that are dealing with audio and then we have a selector over here that allows us to go between inputs. So again, the four-way functionality is pretty useful here. And also notice that I am having a, um, a video meter function, a confidence monitoring happening over here. So now I'm input number two. Uh, let's go to input number three, which is a video that is playing and has some audio. If I want to adjust this, I can do so. Um, and um, by using, again, the size of the button as a four-way button, we can see that I'm able to change the volume of this input source. And now the, the VU metering is also reflected that I have turned it down significantly. Um, so that's a very useful feature to have here. So now we're close to peaking and that might be a sign that we want to reduce the volume a little bit. We have balance, we have mute on off, we have solo on off. We can also uh, delegate to different buses, master, A, B, C, etc. Uh, on and off, um, on and off, go to master bus on and off. So that is what you can do on a four way bin. That, that's a lot of functionality packed into, into this basically. So um, that's that's what we can do in terms of audio. If we press our menu key again here, then we can go to shortcuts. Inside of shortcuts, we are able to um, um, to activate these shortcuts coming straight out of VMAX. And a useful thing is that we can actually color code these and we can set the icons. It's coming out of VMAX, all of it. So um, just if we look at the shortcut that is called F6, for instance, it is uh, having a red color and that red color is red out of VMAX right here. So we could change that into a blue color and we could also change the label that it carries. It says from VMAX and those texts are from right here. So I could change that if I want to press OK and then we will see it updated in the panel right now. These icons are coming straight out of VMAX as well. So shortcuts are really, really, uh, it's a home feeling that this is so heavily imported out of VMAX, just like the titles of all the inputs are, etc. So that's pretty neat. Okay, let's move on to uh, the user page, which is basically giving you keys that you could program yourself easily. So that would offer you a way to keep the configuration Skyhoy has provided, but also override with some user input. And just to give you a quick idea how that works, the easiest way is to go to the configuration tab, press any of these keys, and then you will see that it's basically looking up where is the functionality of this key defined. And then you can go here, add a parameter and save it. And then this key will do that for you. But that's for a different video. So um, we have something called quick class. And that gives us a chance to look at what it is we have in Reactor, the panel management software that is a part of the whole game. The next thing we want to do is to take a look at the PDC side of the Rec Fusion Live. And you'll find that there's a pretty nice integration between the two. For one thing, as we are selecting sources, you find that we have also the camera selector over here reflecting tally. Now, all our sources are basically set up to be in the same order. So it's like the, the, the green uh, preview indicator, tally indicator is just following along over here. But if I change the camera um, order, I can do that by just uh, dragging and dropping here. If I change this around, you'll see that 
these uh, the, the change over here is now obviously reflecting uh, tally in an arbit no not arbitrary way but in a way that's perfectly matched up with how these cameras are actually being mapped uh, to the uh, controller so the way this works is if you go into the camera selector of this one um and and by the way let's just quickly look at what we are dealing with here we have a canon cn 300 we have a Panasonic camera, Sony camera, etc. Those f five cameras, vastly different cameras with Visca protocol and Panasonic protocol and Canon's XC protocol, they are all being managed by the PTC side. And just to confirm, these two cameras over here, Canon CIN 300, I'm now controlling that with the joystick and then I can change over to the Panasonic camera and zoom out and zoom in and so on. So that's also being controlled back to the Canon camera. And the cool thing is that I know the Canon camera is on preview, so I might want to just be aware of that. And um, obviously now I'm running the whole show. So, I mean, now it's on program and I know that, but still having that transported over onto the PTC Fly is pretty useful. The PTC Fly side of the Rec Fusion Live. And just imagine if this was a configuration where the PTC control was with someone else, then with the uh, integration from Reactor, it means that a PTC controller and a live switching controller will talk together like that so that the operators are fully aware whether cameras are on, on preview or on active uh, on a system like VMAX. So that's very, very helpful. And it's something that we are basically setting up um, for these cameras by what is called tally forwarding. Um, and um, some information in the camera selector. So let's just quickly look into the camera selector here where we can see that we have selected configurations for each of these and we can also name them differently. If I just want this to be my, my uh, Canon baby, then we can type that in right here and then this change of label will happen instantly here in the display. Then we have the tally index and the routing index. This is two numbers that are important to make sure that we are mapping the Canon camera up to input number one on vMix. And we are also mapping the Canon camera up to a router on our router. And what does that mean? Well, that means let's just go to the Kumo because if we look at the routing trigger, let's press this one. You can see that we have selected a profile. That means that the AJ Kumo router is being used as a preview monitor for the operator. Uh, with a vMix system, we might want to use some of the uh, outputs 2, 3, or 4 on vMix for this, but it's quite typical that, for instance, you would have a screen in front of the PTC operator. On that screen, he would see the camera that he has currently selected. And that happens on the Kumo router. So on the Kumo router, notice as I'm selecting my camera, I'm changing what input is routed to destination number one on that router. And this is being set up right here. This is basically my output on the Kumo router. So if I set that to to three instead, and we go out to the Kumo router, and then I'm selecting camera. You see nothing is happening apparently, but if I select output number three, then you see my routing is happening to that output. And that's all because of the clever, simple setup. Despite this pretty advanced functionality, sorry about this, I am able to basically say my routing that happens on the camera selector side is going to a Kumo router. And it could also be something else. It could be a a video hub, for instance, from Blackmagic Design or another video router, or it could also be my uh, vMix system that basically uh, helps uh, here. Okay, so as I've now set it up to route to preview and we change this to bus number one, then you'll see that as I'm selecting my camera here on the camera selector, I'm actually changing the preview on vMix. So in a, an integrated case like this one, that's likely what I want to do. But you have seen that we are able to work with external routers, but we can also work with vMix, which makes a whole lot of sense in a product like the Rec Fusion Live that is such an integrated experience. So the selection of camera will instantly also select the source over on um, the uh, preview bus. If I select the preview bus, you see how this is separate. So we just see the tally change over here, but we are not changing which camera we are controlling. We are currently controlling the Canon camera, but if I press this one, then the Canon camera is moved. Now you don't see the source in here, it's just black, but that that input number one would be selected for your, your preview. So that offers a very nice integrated workflow here uh, in both ways. So tally forwarding is, uh, or routing trigger is when you select the camera, where are you changing a route? Is it on preview on your vMix or is it on a video router? Tally forwarding is, uh, something else, this is where we are taking the tally information from 
the uh, switcher system and we are moving it over onto the PTC camera section. And I also want to let you notice something else because if you look at these two cameras, they have an LED on the front. Um, let's see the Canon camera on a front view. And you can see that little LED on the front of the camera as well as on the Panasonic here is actually reflecting the tally status of the products. And now I'm just going between these two. You can see that the one gets, now Panasonic is red and the Canon is green and now the Canon is red and the Panasonic is turned off. So this is how we can also see tally forwarding to these cameras um, happening by a profile that is being selected on the, um, on the camera selector for the PTC uh, Fly part of the Recfusion Live. Sorry for that reference to PTC Fly all the time, but that's, um, it's just pretty neat to see two Skyhoy controllers come together like that. And in fact, this configuration could also be applied on, on a Live Fly and a PTC Fly separately. That's also uh, possible. Before wrapping up this video, I just want to, um, to just mention briefly that there are things that we have not fully explored on the on the PTC control side of the Rec Fusion Live. But I'll just quickly give you a glimpse that if you press the lower edge on this key, you get into uh, presets that we can recall on the camera. So now you can see the camera is moving around to different presets. And if I add more cameras here, then you can press the sides of this key to basically cycle between cameras. And on the upper edge, you're cycling the menu options. And those menu options will be different and distinct for each camera. So if I go to Panasonic, you get different options or you get the equivalent options of the ones that are found for Canon because generally, if you go to the home menu by pressing the top of the joystick, we have selected a number of settings here that we believe are most useful for most people. For instance, we have joystick sensitivity on the home screen for most of these, but it's a little bit different whether you have auto white balance mode or you have uh, iris offset for a Panasonic camera while for a Canon camera, we have something called shooting mode, which is at full auto, and we have manual focus speed and focus position. So it varies a little bit what is put in here, focus position also for the for the Panasonic, etc. But this is the same as what you have uh, probably watched in other videos. So if you want to learn about that, go for a, a controller demonstration um, of a PTC Fly, for instance, or a uh, PTC Pro, because they are kind of shaped the same way and you can do the same in this integrated context. And then there are a few things on the live switcher side that I want to get back to, just circle back to this. And the one thing is that we have something called Quick Class, which is a very neat way for you to expand the number of things that you can do up here. And if you look at this, this menu, the the final sixth option for the menu is called audio inputs. And that gives us access to audio input management based on the quick class concept. It's, um, I think that we should actually change that to audio buses because we already have audio control from the audio menu. So there's no reason to have it redundantly once again. But it gives me a chance to show you that this quick class configuration is like small snippets of functionality that could be any cool thing like managing video routers or uh, in this case, uh, vMix audio bus control. So let's just pick that. And as we have, um, no wait, I just wanna change the title as well here because this is the one that we see in the display. So we just write um, audio bus. And then you see it says audio bus. I go in here and I can select which audio bus I'm going to adjust volume, mute, solo, etc. for. So that quick class concept is one that allows you to tie in small bits of configuration easily that has been pre-prepared, all done from the easy to use home screen of Reactor. And the final bit that we wanna to touch on is just quickly show you that there is this hidden gateway into an engineering menu on the controllers. Most of the time you press down shift, press the blinking green button, in this case, uh, fade to black. And now you can, for instance, enable, disable which of the three different streams that we are streaming to when we press the stream button. So we can toggle that on and off. That's a vMix specific functions. We have the system IP of the controller here, if you wanna know that for the web UI that uh, reacts has. We also have a, um, we are currently on the home page, but if we go to page number one, we have sleep function of the panel. We have display brightness, LED brightness, etc. And finally, we have something called vMix system, which is currently system number one, but we can actually control up to 10 different vMix systems simultaneously from a uh, Rack Fusion Live. Not that you ever want to do that, 
you may just be a uh, one vmix system at a time guy like most people but if you added additional vmix systems here you would actually have a controller that would easily be able to change over and control others so that's pretty mind-blowing and i hope this demonstration gave you a a good impression of the rec fusion live how well integrated it is in terms of bringing a switcher system and an arbitrary amount of types and models of cameras together into a unified whole that just makes it seamless to control your um, broadcast operation so thanks for following watching this video i in invite you to Follow us on social media to subscribe to our channel here because this is a great way to stay in touch with all the innovations from Skahoy.